Happy Sabbath. At some point in the past, I was ministering to two churches. And one of the years, I had to preach one sermon every week, 52 sermons a year, and that didn't include the additional um, evangelistic meetings and other sermons that I had to preach outside those churches. And today, as I stand before you, um, I haven't been feeling the feeling of trembling for a long, long time. It reminds me of my first sermon. There has been circumstances this week that, has make, that have made me aware of the importance of this sermon. I have actually sent emails to a number of people requesting their prayers as I was preparing this sermon. I do pray, and has been my prayer during the week, that you will, as you sit down here, that you will listen, weigh the evidences that are going to be presented. Pray to the Lord as you leave for Him to direct your path. And let Him make the decisions and made him be the judge of the things that have been pres- that are going to be presented this morning this sabbath day of the last uh second last week of august i do need to kneel down and consecrate myself to the lord before i i preach before i do that this is not the sermon in which one should fall asleep. This is not a sermon that one should live in the middle of it and, and, and not having the resolution of the sermon. This is a sermon that we'll use in PowerPoint, so hopefully it will be enough interested people towards the images that we are going to show so nobody of us will fall asleep. It is also a sermon that the preacher is requiring you to pray for him as we go along. And it is a sermon, as, as it is recorded, that I am anticipating a lot of copies to be duplicated and shared. So, as I kneel down, I ask you to bow your heads with me in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you, Lord, today, this Sabbath day, for the day of rest. Also, Lord, as you have laid in my heart the topic today, I pray, Lord, that your Holy Spirit will anoint me, and it will be my teacher, will be my, my mouth, Lord. I do recognize that English is not the best uh, language for me to talk But I pray, Lord, that you will use my mouth, my understanding, my heart, Lord, and you will transform it to share the message with the people. Lord, to anybody that is listening and will be sitting and viewing this sermon, I pray for this sermon, for their hearts, to weigh their their evidences, and for the truth of Jesus to rise up clearly so they can make a decision, informed decision, on the path that they should go. We pray all this in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen. I had to go to visit a person in the hospital not that long ago, and I took this photo. Can you see it? It was something very, very interesting that I found in this hall. It's on the, it's a hospital here in Sydney, here in New South Wales. No need to mention the name. Is one of the many that uh, is allocated by the New South Wales training for training nurses. This is on the building that was called Second West. And I saw something here very, very interesting. And I took my camera and I took this photo. Can you see the interesting thing on the feature? 
is there. It's near a phone. There's a phone there in which you will dial uh, a number. Can you see how, interested, how interesting it is? Well, I actually got closer. And that's a close-up photo. Close enough? I went and took a third photo even closer. He says, emergency security phone numbers in the hospital. For emergency phone number, call the 666. I thought, well, that's interesting. If you are in trouble, call the devil. <laughs> now, more and more people are realizing today that there is something going wrong in traditional, conventional medicine. People are looking for alternatives. People are looking for real solutions, solutions that tackle the cause of the problem rather than just the symptoms. So when we read in case of emergency 666, one will say that is the perfect opening for a sermon on alternative medicine. And friends, the Bible says that there was a man that ran for an lion and encountered a bear that went for safety inside the house, lay his hand upon the wall, and he was bitten by the snake. The same way, friends, I believe that as many of us are running from a system that has proven not fully capable to solve the health problems of this world, we're running away for an alternative we're running away for an alternative medicine, and we end up into an alternative counterfeit. We run away from the lion, and we encounter the bear. We go for safety, lay our hands upon the wall, and we are bitten by the snake. Turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Acts, just chapter 16, verses 16 and 18. We are going to just introduce this topic using a story from the Bible, a story that happened to the Apostle Paul, the physician Luke, and some others. The Bible reads in Acts of the Apostles, Acts chapter 16, verse 16 and onwards, now it happened as we went to prayer, that a certain slave girl possessed with a spirit of divination met us, who brought her master's much profit but fortune telling. This girl followed Paul and us and cried out, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High, God, who proclaimed to us the way of salvation. And this she did for many days. But Paul, greatly annoyed, turned and said to the Spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out of her that very hour. This girl was a slave from two masters. She had the earthly masters to whom she was giving the prophets of her fortune telling. But she was also a slave of Satan. She was demon possessed. Now the apostles, the apostle of the Lord is walking around this town and she goes for many days, the Bible says, for many days. She goes after them and is telling them, and he's telling everyone, everyone else, these are the servants of the most high God that declare unto us the way of salvation. Is that a good statement or a bad statement? That's a good statement. Is that a true statement or a false statement? It's a true statement. What is she doing? What is the devil trying to do with that statement? He's trying to mingle and making appear that the same spirit that was directing Paul is still the same spirit of fortune-telling. 
is making himself through that girl one with the Spirit of God. Well, should be all right. Look at the declaration. She is declaring truth. Therefore, her practices should be kosher, should, should be legal. She is making herself one of us. And the Bible tells us that Paul was greatly annoyed. In fact, in the King James Version, I like it because, because it says that Paul was grieved with sorrow and rebuked the, the spirit and that daughter of Satan became a daughter of Jesus. <clears throat> this statement is found in the Testimonies for the Church, Volume 5. I have from time to time received letters both from ministers and lay members of the church inquiring if I think, if I think it wrong to consult the spiritualist and cherubian physicians. I have not answered these letters for want of time. But just now the subject is again urged upon my attention. So numerous are these agents of Satan becoming, and so general is the practice of seeing counsel from them that it seems needful to utter words of warning. There might be some people, as they're watching this DVD, as they're sitting today here, and I will, as they will hear about it, that they will say, what qualifies Oscar to talk about the subject that he's about to talk? And I found that it was needful for me to share a little part of my testimony, a part that happened to me or started happening to me when I was 18 years old. I had some disturbances in my home. My father left, and I was under extreme depression. I started studying engineering, electrical engineering in Spain. Now, I was the kind of child that will just look at something and memorize it very, very quickly. Never had a problem with academics. I will never study, but nevertheless get ver will get very good notes because I had a very good memory. Nevertheless, though there were 200 people in that classroom, and I had the highest mark in order to get into university on that classroom, I was struggling. I couldn't concentrate. A friend of mine called me and said, Oscar, there is this group of people. They're gathering together. They will teach you how to concentrate, how to actually back, get back on track and get back into your studies. They will teach you many other things. They will teach you how to get up in the morning without an alarm clock and some other little things. But they are very big in education. So come along and you'll see. Come on a Saturday morning. They have the first train, half of the training that will be free. After that, if you accept to go along with it, you just pay $300. You finish with the whole training, but then they give you a car. And in that car, you become a member. And being a member, they are represented in 250 countries. And you can go into any of the trainings in different countries and join in, and you don't have to pay any more fees anymore for the rest of your life. So I went there to a nearby city. It was a luxurious hotel. That impressed me. I thought, well, this is not a kind of backyard business. This is full on. Luxurious hotel, the best hotel in town. When I walked through the big hall, there was about 2,000 people. The place was packed. Among them, businessmen, doctors, lawyers, all the cream of the cream in that valley. There was nuns, pastors, declared Christians, born-again Christians. All good people. That got me in. Basically, I'll tell you what, got, what really sealed it for me. When I saw the nun, I thought, well, this place is safe. If the nun is here, the place is safe. 
When I inquired with the nun, why were you here? She said, these techniques had helped me on my spiritual walk, on my spiritual growth, as I could actually concentrate better in order to talk to Jesus. Wow. I went through the first six hours of the training. They convinced me. I put on my credit card, I paid the $300, and I went, I went for the ride. First exercise. They taught us how to go down on what they call different mental levels, alpha, beta, or semi-conscious levels. They taught us through a process of five, four, three, two, one, to go to those levels. And then the first exercise was the exercise of imagination. You need to imagine that you had a cube, and that cube, and this gentleman said in the beginning, right from the front, said that cube needs to rotate this way. So he will call in his microphone and will say, five, four, three, two, one. And then guess what? A cube will come in my mind all, and it started rotating in exactly the same direction that this gentleman told me to do. Same direction. Now, after the exercise finished, this gentleman walked into this big hall, over 2,000 people there, went into the middle of, the, of one of the roads, stopped near a lady in red, looked at her, and with the microphone on, he said to her, you're a very original lady, isn't it? And she says, why is that? He said, well, everybody else is turning the cube this way. You were turning the cube this way. How did he know? How did he know that this lady was turning the cube this way? Where was the cube turning? In her mind. That got me in. Then he mentioned something. I was getting attracted myself to a little girl in my neighborhood. But she was not getting attracted to me. And he mentions this. These exercises, you know, some people have actually used it to get a girlfriend. Oh, that got me in. <laughs> By the time that I finished the training, it was intensive training for a number of weeks. By the time I finished the training, I was sitting down on a chair. Four people, five people were around me. I used what they trained me to do. Five, four, three, two, one. And when I said one, somebody throw a name to me. They throw a name. Any name. They had a piece of paper with names with people that had diseases. And they throw this name. A person appeared in my mind. He was a tall man. And then I had to diagnose his problem. What did I need to do? I need to diagnose his problem. So here I was, I was sitting down. My hands were like this, and I started going down this body that was in my mind, though my hands were literally stretched out. By the time I went to the hip and ch started checking the legs, sure enough, the training was done properly. My hands felt fairly, fairly cold. Fairly cold. And I said to the group that were around me, I don't know what it is, but the hands are getting cold. Something wrong with this man's legs. When I came out of the exercise, I, show, I, I saw the profile of this man. He lost his legs on a train accident when he was 70 years old. He was now 85. And what I saw was actually the wooden legs of that man. I saw ladies in my mind that had cancers. And these ladies, they wouldn't even know it themselves yet. I saw a virus around a titanium valve of my grandfather infected with a virus, and that virus actually ended up killing him. I saw how the, the surgeons tried to 
stitch up a new valve into a heart that was disintegrated in their hands, and I saw it before we got the news that they could not stitch up the new valve into his heart. I knew two minutes before my grandfather died how he died, all because now I was a healer. I could go and operate on people for the good of humanity. People will walk into the room and I will just diagnose them. I will just close my mind. I will just go on the train. I will be anywhere. I will close my mind. I'll go into my mental state and I will diagnose. And if I saw something wrong in it, either stream heat or pointy heat or a spread heat or coldness or whatever, I started to identify on a notebook what those feelings were as my hand was actually feeling different things. The theory of mind controlling mind was originated by Satan. To put human philosophy where divine philosophy should be. Innocent though it might appear, if exercised upon patience, it will tend to their destruction, not to their restoration. It opened a door through which Satan will enter to take possession both of the mind that is given up to be controlled by another and of the mind that controls. We were told that the key of the issue was, in order for our training, that we had to allow every barrier to go down so the program will work better. In fact, if we were working with a patient, if we will let them know that we were doing so, it will work better. They, it will work better if they will give their permission for us to do those cosmic operations on those people. That was the key. Light on, I discovered that those barriers are set there by God Almighty to protect our will. It is not God's purpose that any human should, be, should yield his mind and will to the control of another, becoming a passive instrument in his hands. Come with me to Deuteronomy chapter 18. Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 10 and 12. The Bible says, There shall not be found among you anyone who makes his son or his daughter pass through the fire, or one who practices witchcraft, or a soothsayer, or one who interprets omens, or a sorcerer, or one who conjures spells, or a medium, or a spiritus, or one who calls upon the dead. For all who do these things are an abomination to the Lord, and they are an abomination to the Lord, all those that do these things. It's interesting that this is the old time testament. It's interesting that we're wondering if this applies today. And then I found this quote. There are many who shrink with horror from the thought of consulting spirit mediums, but who are attracted by more pleasing forms of spiritism. Others are led astray by the teaching of Christian science, by the mysticism of theophysy, and other oriental, oriental religions. The apostles of nearly all forms of spiritualism claim to have the power to cure the disease. They attribute their power to electricity, magnetism, the so-called sympathetic remedies, or the Latin forces within the mind of man. Did you know what, friends? When I was involved in that world, I saw miracles happen. Do you think that I stood long enough there because it didn't work? It worked. I'm going to show you how that is done. And then we continue. Remember that lady 
that was turning the cube this way. Now, when we stay in a state of sip, uh, almost auto-hypnosis, and we drop all the barriers down, we are open to any influence for any spirit. Now, this gentleman said, you turn the cube this way. One, five, four, three, two, one. Boom. At that point, in that state, every demon in that place whispered in our ears, turn it this way. Introduce the thought into our minds. All the barriers were down, except on one person. There was one demon near a lady in red, and that demon in throw another image this way. Now the same demon communicated the message to the person at the front. The person in red is turning it this way. So the person at the front went there and it was show down, isn't it? It was show time. Probably the person at the front didn't even know there was a demon. Do you know that gentleman that I started going with my hands down or my imagination? And my hands got fairly cold. Do you know how did they get cold? Back then I would say, hey, that's the power within my reach. I have the power. Do you know how the, those hands got cold? My hands were going down. And a demon was between my both hands. And it did like this. How does it get hot? A demon puts his hand over my hand and he heats it up. And there are not a few, even in this Christian age, who go to these healers instead of trusting in the power of the living God and the skill of a well-qualified physician. We are going to go through a bit of a history lesson here. On the time that these comments were written. This is called Campbell's Machine. Campbell's Machine was developed in the beginning of the, cent of the turning of the century between 18, in the 1800s to the, sorry, between the 19th to the 20th century, in the turning of the century. It was a device, electronic, electric device, and the individual or patient had to be actually attached to that device there and there on the feet and sometimes they will actually uh, uh, connect devices also around around the arms and then some electric impulse were actually released from this this uh, board here and supposedly that electric impulse will actually bring healing and restoration to that patient Campbell's actually got this model and developed this model out of the writings of a particular lady that wrote at the same time as when the Council to, to the Church was written. Her name was Emma Harding Beaton. Br Brighton, sorry. Emma Harding Brighton. And these are the days. She actually died in 1899. Look at the, how interesting the timing for this lady to appear in the picture. This is actually taken from a website that is actually dedicates all the efforts to pro promote and propagate the wonderful ministry of Emma Brighton. She wrote in her book, The Electric Physician, she wrote this, The Electric Physician, or Self-Cure Through Electricity, Electricity, a plain guide to the use of electricity with accurate directions for the treatment and cure of varied, various diseases, chronic and acute. She was a fairly famous, fairly charismatic lady. She wrote that book that we just mentioned, The Electric Physician. She also wrote a manual, medical manual for electricity. She actually trained people on, the, on, on, on these teachings, but she also wrote this book. It's called Ghost Land. Occultism. Was the same author. In fact, in this website, 
they describe her as this, as a spiritualist, occultist, and propagandist. The progressive mind was a newspaper of the time, and the progressive mind wrote this, that Mrs. Emma Britton, now living in England, has been for many years a leading exponent of, in spiritualism. Her lectures in this country excited great interest. She was thrillingly eloquent, logical, and impressive as a speaker, and, he, in her, and, her, and her influence for good was correspondingly great. She is known uh, around the world, etc. And then later on, this article actually describes how she was the key figure for the propagation of more than 12,000 copies back then of this book, The Ghostland Occultism. This is the one that wrote the book, The Electric Physician also. She actually pictured herself as an angel of God, and can you see that? That's, a, that's the graveyard, by the way. I want you to pay attention to this photo because it's going to come later on in a few minutes in a different setting, in a more modern setting. She pictured herself as an angel of God. And at, in certain degrees, you know, well thought, well, well thought because 13 years after her death, that's a photo 13 years after her death when she appeared again. And the article wrote, Mrs. Brighton, the eloquent speaker and talented writer, being dead yet speaketh. Her name will ever be fresh and fragrant in the history of spiritualism. Now, that was actually written. The council in terms of spiritual, spiritual healing, spiritual magnetism, electric healing, and so on, was a council given to the Church of God at a time in which this lady was actually doing this kind of healing. Does that apply today? That was a hundred and... Does that apply today? This is a time in which the preacher is going to request prayer to show you what is coming. This is the SPFX Exeo technology. This is an article taken from one of their websites. It's based on decades of research conducted in the field of bioenergetic and bioresponse medicines of the human body. The SPFX KFXZI is the original device developed by Professor Bill Nelson. And the XEO is the upgrade, upgrade device of that original device. The XEO is a state-of-the-art evoked potential biofeedback system for stress detection and reduction. Does that sound good? <laughs> Sounds fairly scientific? Fairly scientific. And he does all this. What type of therapies does the SEO offer? This is a small sample of the capabilities of this amazing healing instrument. This is taken also from the same website. Spinal adjustment, organ revitalizing, sport program with performance improvement and mental focus, detoxification, beauty and facelift, hormone balancing, chakra and aura cleansing, dental programs and TMJ alignments, scalar ac acupuncture and meridian therapies, ADD, ADHD, and learning disability support. It's a wonder. It's a beauty. And this is it. This device works in, in a way such as this. Some electrical impulse are sent to the patient. The patient has wrappings on the forehead, hands, and 
faith. Have we seen that before? Have we seen that before? <clears throat> the information is then transmitted to a computer. And this computer shares with the practitioner all the wrongs that are referring to this patient. A consultation might be something like this. You'll sit down, they'll wrap you in here, they'll wrap you on, on, on your hands, on your forehead, and on your feet. And then you get connected to the machine. And then the machine will give the feedback, and that feedback will then be given to you. The machine does not just work in terms of telling you what's wrong with you, it also treats you at the same time with the impulse of electricity. There's different varieties. Every practitioner might, might use different things. They might actually put a bucket of water for cleansing of your feet. They might actually use some homeopathic remedies that will then increment the recovery process or it will be a benefit for the recovery process. They might use some pendulum to actually certify that the machine is actually nivellating the magnetic field in your body correctly. Or they might just use the hand. I just want to mention something in terms of homeopath homeopathic remedies. We won't spend much time on this, but I just want to mention something. I'm just going to mention the five laws of homeopathic remedies because I believe that many of us do not actually understand what homeopathic is all about. And we, we are confused thinking that homeopathic is actually herbal remedy. The first law is the law of sim similars, which means that if you seek with something, something that, they, they can give you something that if you were well, it will make you sick of the same thing. So, in other words, Kenite or keninite, keninite has been used for the treatment of malaria. But if you give, according to this principle, if you give fairly diluted doses of that kenite to a healthy patient, that healthy patient will actually start developing symptoms of malaria. So by giving it to a sick person, like cures like. That's the first principle. The second one is the doctrine of individualization. That means that we, if we find the right remedy, you don't need 20. You only need the right one that will fix your problem. Okay? The doctrine of minimum dose. This is, this is one of the wonders of marketing. Most of the homeopathic remedies are actually water. Because it's so highly diluted that the principle is my, my minimum dose is best. Is best. So they dilute it, dilute it, dilute it in water. Okay, that's why most of them, they just taste like water. Most of them are just clear. The doctrine of vital force assumes that because when we seek, we lose vitality, these remedies will give you vitality back. And the last one is the doctrine of potentiation, or also called dynami dynamization. I'm just going to tell you what this is all about. This is the definition. According to this principle, success, successfully diluting a potentially therapeutic solid, what does it do? It spiritualizes the substance, thus increases its curative and detoxifies, it detoxifies it. What does it, do? what does it do? It spiritualizes. Do you know what they used to do in the old times, the principles of homeopathic? They used to write poems on the on the leaves of the trees, poems of love. And then they will, they will dilute it, dilute it, dilute it, until finally they will just drink water. But they will say that the essence was in it. If you were in love with somebody, you will write it in a leaf, and then you will dilute it, and then you will give that to that person. Because the spirit is in it, 
So that person eventually will do what? Will fall in love with you. That's this principle. And in one occasion, one of our own doctors visit one of our health retreats. That was in the turning of the century also, at the time in which the Council of the Church was written, or Council for the Church was written. And this doctor started acting away from normal hygiene methods of healing. Okay? Normal biblical methods of healing. And this is what it was written about this doctor. When Dr. A came to the health retreat, she laid aside her knowledge and practice of hygiene and administered, administered the little homeopathic doses for almost every alignment. This was what? This was against the light God had given. Thus are people who had been taught to avoid drugs in almost every form were receiving now a different education. I was obligated to tell her that this practice of depending upon medicine, whether in large or small doses, was not in accordance with the principles of health reform. The Lord had in His providence given light in regards to the establishments of sanitariums where the sick should be treated upon hygiene principles. The people must be taught to depend on the Lord's remedies, pure air, pure water, simple and health, health food, foods and diet. What if I cannot be there at, in person? This is actually also taken from another website from one of these practices. What about if, look, I'm, I've got a busy life, I cannot just go there. Well, very simply, the skill has the ability to connect and work with you anywhere, anytime. It works long distance through that it calls subspace. We just need to agree when is the right time. It will not work if you do not give permission. For a session. This is very important to know. It is extremely effective when you do give permission. Sometimes we do long distance with you on the phone. And on other times, it is more important to just agree on a time and the issues concerned. Then you get feedback afterwards on the phone. This is actually called sympathetic remedies. A sympathetic remedy is when a person will say, I'll deal with your issue. You only need to give me a piece of, a little bit of your hair. And I'll put it in the machine. You can be in your office, but the machine will tell me what's wrong with you. And that is called sympathetic remedies. Have we heard a counsel? Have we read a counsel in one of the quotes before about sympathetic remedies? You know, in my hometown in Spain, you know how they get rid of words? Is it words? Words? W A R T. Words? They wait for the child to be sleeping. And then they just cut a little bit of the hair of the child and then they go outside into the garden and they bury it. That's sympathetic remedy if you want the technical name of it, if you want the biblical name of it, that is witchcraft. It is plain witchcraft. An angel of the great deceiver will say and do anything to gain his object. It matters little, little whether he calls himself a spiritualist, an electrophysician, or a magnetic healer. It matters little. By spacious, spacious, pretense, spacious pretense, he wins the confidence of the unweary. He pretends to read life story and to understand all the difficulties and affections of those who resort to him. A friend of mine went to one of these healers. Do you know what was the first? He, he felt very bad. So he wanted a solution. The first thing that the machine told the practitioner was this. You have been beaten in the past by at least eight snakes. That's life story. That's also soothsaying. That's fortune telling. 
That's witchcraft. What does eight, the beating of eight snakes have to do with his situation? When he was beaten 20 years before by non-venomous venomous snakes. Unless it was to gain the what? The trust and the confidence of that person. What do we read here? He pretends to read the life story and to understand all the difficulties and afflictions of those who resort to him. Or what about, what about my spirit and my connection to God? How does the skill handle this? Well, this is one of the most awesome parts of the skill. It's not surprising that it's one of the most awesome parts. I would say it's the principal part because Satan is behind all of, all, of all this. It's the principal part. Not only does he work with your physical and mental bodies, he has many specific programs and approaches to connect you with your spirit because so many levels of treatments are added into session automatically in feedback with subconscious Many times this is handled without our having to do anything. You lower your barriers and you don't know who is coming in. So we're talking about electric current here, right? Satanic agents claim to cure disease. They attribute their power to electricity, magnetism, or the so-called sympathetic remedies. While in truth, they are bad channels for... Satan's electric currents. But this means he calls, he casts his spell over the bodies and souls of men. This is Professor, Doctor, Doctor Professor Bill Nelson. Well, the reason why I'm saying Doctor Professor is because apparently this man has done many, many things, including the helping of the returning of Apollo 13 back to, to the earth. Though those, those claims have never been um, identified as true. So he's a doctor, he's a professor, though we don't know what university, we cannot find the files, but he's, he's the inventor and the designer of the Exeo. In this photo, I don't know if you see, you see it in there, this is all taken by, from his website, there's a dragon there right over the heart. This is him also, this is actually another t-shirt that has um, Egyptian offering to gods. This is him. Is Dr. Nelson, Bill Nelson during the day and he's actually Desiree during the night. I haven't gone anywhere. He's, he's bold to say it in his own website. And now this photo as an angel of God. It seems like the spirit of Emma Brighton has been resurrected. So if it did apply to her times, to the writings and counsels given to the church, it also applies today. Don't you think so? And there are no few, even in this Christian age, who go to these healers. Instead of trusting in the power of the living God and to the skill of a well-qualified Christian physician. What is magnetic therapy? Magnetic therapy, this is also taken from one of their websites, it's a natural way to treat a wide variety of ailments in both humans and animals. It is 100% safe. How much safe? 100%. Drug-free and has no side effects. It works well as a therapy alone or in conjunction with both natural or conventional therapies. A small high-strength healing, earth magnets, are placed on the bodies as close as to the point uh, uh, to, uh, uh, to the point of pain as possible. Magnets can be applied in the form of straps, wraps, jewelry, insulate, pillow, mattress covers. Magnet therapy has been around since 2000 BC, and I will even say even further. So, are there any side effects? 
the website asks. There are no side effects to wearing magnets. You cannot overdose on magnetism. It is 100%, again, safe, has no drags, and is not invasive. You can wear as many magnets as you like, as long as you like. And then, another question in the same website. Who should not use magnets? Well, it's 100% safe, right? It's 100% safe, so what should be the answer? Everyone, put it on your dog, put it on your cat, put it on your children. You should never use magnets if you have an internal heart pacemaker, as the magnet will interfere with the signal to the heart. You should never wear magnets if you use an internal insulin pump, as the pump will not function properly. And you should never use magnets if you are pregnant. Why not? Is my question. It's a hundred percent safe. Do you know that the Lord has actually played two magnets for our bodies? You can choose either the coast or the mountains. It's called country living. It's called country living. It's called be surrendered with God's nature. Because only God's nature knows exactly how much magnetism you need. Amen. It was in England that I heard the story of this cow that was always eating underneath a power line. And then when the cow got pregnant, delivered a calf with two heads. Too much magnetism is not safe. Only God knows the magnetism that you need. That's why he actually has developed country living. What happens if you put a magnet to a compass? It moves the arrow from the north. The body is saying that this magnetism that you have, he has to work in a particular way. But now we are externally changing it. Let me tell you, friends, it's not only the physical that gets out of whack. It's not only the physical that gets out of north. It's also what? The spiritual. But eventually, we won't need the machine. If, think about it. If we can do it long distance through the machine, probably we can do it without the machine also, don't you? Don't you think? Probably we'll just use the hands. Do you know how I feel, friends, with the little part of the testimony that I shared in the beginning? Do you know how I feel? I feel like a rock star that has found Jesus, denied the old nature, and has gone to some of our churches today and hears the rock music inside and recognize the same spirit. Do you know where I'm coming from? I feel like one that has been healing with the hands and been rebuked by God and the Lord has cleared up and erased it and taken away from my life. And now I can see it. I can see the same spirit even among us. Why is this sermon today? The same counsel that was said in the beginning because more and more many of us are going to these places. Many, many, more and more, many of us are practicing these things. We're running from conventional and we're going to alternative counterfeit. The placing of the hands. Aurotic magnetic healing is using high vibration energy through the trained practitioner's hand. Those were my hands. And I did the training. To facilitate healing of the auric field and physical body. The auric field, also know, known as aura, is a field of electronic, electromagnetic vibration that direct, directly relates to the physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual of the individual. Yes, totally agreeing with this. But the council to the church says, 
Some will be tempted to receive these wonders from God. The sick will be healed before us. Miracles will be performed in our side. Are we prepared to trial which awaits us when the lying wonders of Satan shall be more fully exhibited? That's a good question, don't you think? Are we preparing ourselves now for the wonders that are coming towards us? God has placed in our power to obtain a knowledge of the, health, of the laws of health. He has made it our duty to preserve our physical powers to the best possible condition that we might render to Him an acceptable service. It's still, even today, some of us wonder how is it that one can live without meat? Please, we have been hearing these messages for 30 years, 40 years, 50 years. But then somebody gives us another option. Alternative, counterfeit. That doesn't involve anything about our weaknesses. Doesn't involve any quitting at all. Doesn't involve any restoration, reformation of our lifestyle. And we take it. Pure air, sunshine, abstinuousness, rest, exercise, pop, proper diet, the use of water, trust in divine power. There, these are the true remedies. And what will happen if we don't take it? What will happen if we go either to the lion or to the bear? Very simply. Those who refuse to improve the light and knowledge that has been mercifully placed within their reach are rejecting one of the means which God has granted them to promote spiritual as well as physical life. They are placing themselves where they will be exposed to what? To the delusions of Satan. Where are you today, friend? Are you placing yourself before the delusions of Satan? Before I continue and wrap this message today, has the message been clear? Have the quote, quotes found in the counsel to the church of God for the last days been faithfully used today? Some of you didn't even, didn't even know that the counsel to the church mentioned about these things, didn't you? That's why this week I had a terrible week. Because the enemy of souls is terribly frightened every time that his little tricks get uncovered. A mother that is crying for her daughter. And he goes for healing. But the healing appears that it will take too long. So he runs to the arms of the serpent rather than going to the arms of God. Look, I can sympathize with the mother, but the Lord has made available to us plenty provision for our healing or our trust. The Lord has said, this is the way, walk in it. When you go to the left, when you go to the right, other versions also say, so you don't go to the left, you don't go to the right. <laughs> because, you know, the lion is in one side, the bird is in the other. Friends, today, I would just like to ask all those that will like prayer from God, to have a prayer for their healing, to stand up with me as I kneel down and pray to God for healing, for guidance, and as we are obedient, obedient to His law, that He will impart His, His faithfulness upon us with healing. So if you know of anybody, you can stand up in behalf of somebody else. You know what? We can do this kind of healing long distance. 
Because the hand of God reaches everywhere. So if you want to, want, want to stand in behalf of somebody else, if you want to stand in behalf of yourself for health problems, if you want to stand because you have recognized that the message today comes from God, and the Lord doesn't want His people to be in ignorance, and you don't want to reject it, but you want to accept it, also stand up. I want to pray for you also. Praise God. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, there are people standing up for healing. The people, Lord, are standing up because they have discovered the plan that you have in terms of health. There are people also standing up, Lord, because they have realized that they've been in, in an alternative counterfeit. There are people standing up, Lord, in behalf of others that are suffering, Father. So in behalf of all these people, Lord, I want to pray for healing and salvation. I want to pray, Lord, for forgiveness for our sins because the word healing is also the word salvation. Lord, I want to pray for guidance. I want to pray for faithfulness. I want to pray, Lord, for clarity of mind and discernment because this old serpent called the devil and Satan is clever, Lord, we cannot compete with him. He's been training on the field for 6,000 years. But you are all wisdom. And you have promised, Lord, that if we ask for it, you will impart it upon us. We thank you, Lord, for the counsel given to the church of God for these last days. Because there has not, not been one single aspect that hasn't been covered that needed to be covered. We thank you, Lord, for the way in which your word has been read express and presented and we thank you lord also in the way you have taken the preacher out of the way lord because i do not want to be in your way lord we want the gift of the holy spirit you are the heavenly father that are willing to give the comforter to us that will lead us into all truth Today we have noticed, Lord, that there is still much more truth to be discovered and much more need of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for showing your mercy, your forgiveness, and your healing towards us. In this holy and precious name, amen.